So he, I don't know if you could hear all that, Glenn, but what he's, he, he compared what they're doing on Reddit with, the, with Wall Street and GameStop to the insurrection on January 6th. He's comparing people doing completely legal things and trading and using the very system Wall Street set up. They're, they're, they're just getting it regular. When pe regular people get in on it, it's the equivalent of trying to overthrow the government. And so he's advocating to shut down social media. And now let's watch the CEO of NASDAQ. I bet she doesn't push back. Let's listen. Good evening, Ape Nation. Guys, what's going on? It is Friday, February 11th, 2022. And the clip in the beginning that I played for you was from Jimmy Dore's show. That was with Glenn Greenwald, the reporter, used to be at The Intercept. Uh, and they were talking the day after the buy button was taken away from retail. And they were discussing what people were saying on the news. And the reason I played that is because... I think a lot of people in the last year have become extremely disingenuous when it comes to where their loyalties lie and who they really are looking out for. Look no further than what was said immediately after the buy button was taken away. Look at the reaction from the establishment. And that will tell you, or at least give you a good idea of what these people's priorities are. Do they actually have an agenda that they want to help retail? that they want to level the playing field and bring the market back to the basic supply and demand system it was built off. No more payment for order flow, dark ball trading, you guys know all the things. And I'm gonna come back to this Jimmy Dore clip and what the NYSE president said. Now, AMC today finished up about a percentage point at 1881. GameStop as well was up. Two of the only stocks I hold in my portfolio that were green today. And I know you're probably thinking, but we've always historically followed tech and growth. For some reason, I mean, just looking at Palantir today, or the last 48 hours, it is down huge, take a, taking a nosedive with the rest of the market. So why is it that NAMC and GME are suddenly not following their traditional path? We'll talk about that after the intro. And I'm going to get into a few other things. The Federal Reserve meeting on Monday the new advisory system bulletin from the Department of Justice. And I'll finish up the conversation about Sundial and possibly what we're going to get into tonight in the live stream. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, cue the speeder. Okay, so we got some news that there's going to be a closed board meeting on February 14th, which is Monday. The Federal Reserve is going to meet at 11.30 a.m. What they're going to be talking about, I'm assuming, has something to do with QE, quantitative easing, possibly an emergency rate hike. And I think that's a big reason why the market freaked out today a little bit. Also concerns about this new intelligence update with Russia possibly invading before the Olympics are over. I'm going to get into that either tomorrow or maybe tonight in the live stream. A clip that I want to play for you guys, but we're not going to have time in this video to play it. But something to keep your eye on, guys, for Monday. We also got a bulletin from Homeland Security. This is from February 7th. It's a summary of terrorism threats to the U.S. homeland. And they're really targeting misinformation on social media, conspiracy theories, false or misleading narratives. And why am I bringing this up? Massalorian, why are you talking about this? Well, let's just say there's... A possibility that at some point they could come for the YouTuber creators who are talking about the stock market. Uh, it doesn't specifically mention that in this bulletin, uh, but this gets updated all the time. And obviously, guys, the major institutions and the hedge funds are in control of the market right now because if they weren't, this would be brought up. They'd be mentioning this. So make no mistake, uh, we do not hold all the cards right now. There's still a lot we got to push in order to make change and get a fair shake at this market. Speaking of change, let's talk about the SEC and Gary Gensler. So far, if I had to give Gary Gensler a grade for his what? He's been in office now almost a year as the chair of the SEC. The only thing I've seen him produce was that POS GameStop report that actually did retail more harm than good. 
because what happened immediately after the GameStop report came out, if you guys remember, they had people like Charles Gasparino on talking to Liz Clayman, saying that we're conspiracy theory nuts and that the market is working just fine. And that narrative has stuck with us now. It does seem to be becoming a thing where everyone is saying that we don't know what we're talking about, uh, even though everything that he mentioned in the GameStop report were things that we had dug up in DD had probably had never really been mentioned before because of the greed they had just gotten so blatant that you know a bunch of morons were able to dig up this information uh, attack the hedge funds back in January put a few of them out of business and because they were losing the game they changed the rules they took away retail's availability to buy and a lot of people got crushed and ever since that day they've been able to consistently keep kicking this can down the road and finding ways to quell any type of fomo that we could possibly build up especially now where we've dipped under that 20 dollars psychological level it's going to take a lot to get up past that again i mean it looks like we found some stability at 1415 but breaking through that 20 again it's probably going to be very similar to when we had to try to break 14 back in May. Now, I know there are some YouTubers out there right now who are praising Gary Gensler. They think he's amazing. Uh, just remember where Gary's roots are. Remember where he came from. He didn't come from the streets, okay? He was at Goldman Sachs for 20 years. Everybody down there knows him. He's been in government for a long time. He is part of the establishment. And I find it hard to believe he's gonna sell out his friends to help a bunch of strangers. But I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong on him. I hope he's going to actually implement these new rules and regulations, enforce them, and penalize. And the other thing about penalizing, there needs to be more of a penalty for these people that are breaking the rules. If you can make more money than the fine is going to be, why would you ever even stop to consider following the rules? If you were constantly bringing in a profit, why would you change any of your practices? Okay, I'm gonna jump on to Sundial. Here's what I wanna say about it. So I know it's a really cheap stock. It's a marijuana stock. Lou On Demand was talking about it as the next play after AMC and that there's a lot of money to be made in it. You know, it's a Canadian company. So they don't have exposure really to the American market right now at all because of the federal laws. In my estimation, and this is just a guess and this is my opinion, but unless we are going to federally legalize marijuana, there are always going to be drawbacks to getting into that business as far as exchanging money and rates. If you're not backed by the FDIC, there's no federal backing behind you being robbed or someone claiming your money. Uh, the government can still seize your money if it's in a state where marijuana is still illegal. So there's so many drawbacks to the business right now. If by some miracle, before the midterms, the Democrats can find a way to get that onto a piece of legislation to pass it, then that would change the game for Sundial, I think. The problem is the Democrats have many problems right now. I don't know how high on their priority list legalizing marijuana so Sundial can squeeze is i think they got some bigger concerns right now like losing the house and the senate but if we start to hear rumblings about it definitely something i'll be keeping my eye on and hopefully by the time that happens amc will have already paid us we won't have to worry about it too much the establishment does not want us to win they do not want to share their wealth with us so putting your hopes in these people is really a difficult thing to do i'm trying to do it myself right now and I'm going to talk more about that hopefully tonight. Guys, if you see the thumbnail up for the live stream, we'll be going on tonight. If for some reason this runs long in editing and I don't get done till 9 o'clock, it will be tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, 100%. But I'm going to try to get it out for you tonight. I'm also finishing up a video for tomorrow, as I said, talking about this Russian invasion to Ukraine. The government's uh, position on it and what they've been telling the media and what I've been able to find. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. It's Friday night. I'm going to try to go get everything set up now for the live stream so we can go on at 9. If you don't see the thumbnail, that means that it'll be tomorrow night and I'll put a thumbnail up 
probably mid-afternoon tomorrow. Guys, as always, thank you for all the likes, the views, the comments. My new subscribers, my OGs, I appreciate each and every one of you. We're here to break the wheel. This is Ape Nation. I'm the Massalorian, and I'm out.